integration is super important for the next generation of computing systems for multiple reasons. First of all, you know, I talked about the so-called memory wall, which means that we spend a lot of time and energy for these abundant data applications, trying to shuttle data back and forth you know, to off-chip memory from the compute chip. And second, I also talked about the miniaturization wall. Today we are at a, depending on who you talk to, at a five or a three nanometer technology node, the question is how far we are going to go. Now, the conventional ways of dealing with the memory wall is to pack more and more transistors on a single chip. Now, when we hit the miniaturization wall, and that's what I call a deadly combination of this memory wall and the miniaturization wall, then what are you going to do? Well, you know, you have to go to this three-dimensional structures that I was talking about. That's like building a high rise with, you know, very fine-grained integration of logic and memory layers. Now, if you have that, it's just like you built a skyscraper, but if you did not build enough elevators between the various floors of a skyscraper, it's a useless skyscraper. And that's where this dense vertical connectivity, uh, so dense 3D integration of heterogeneous technologies is the key because it's not just oh, one single kind of a technology, it's a logic technology, it's a memory technology, and they're ultra dense three-dimensional integration. So we have been doing stuff in, at multiple levels. So for example, uh, we have innovated at the technology levels themselves. So for example, our work on uh, carbon nanotip field effect transistors and how we created the imperfection immune paradigm to overcome the substantial imperfections that prevented correct circuit operations of these carbon nanotip circuits. And we have been able to overcome that. That enabled us to build the first carbon nanotip computer and, you know, and now you know, carbon nanotubes are established in multiple uh, industrial facilities. But that's one of the axes, which is like fundamental nanotechnologies. But the other axis that you know, we work on is about building what I call nanosystems, new architectures that are uniquely enabled by these new nanotechnologies. For example, you know, uh, logic, carbon nanotube field effect transistors for logic, resistive RAM for memories, and so on and so forth, and their uh, ultra-dense 3D integration, for example, using monolithic 3D integration. Now, one point I do wanna make, which is like with respect to these architectures for nanosystems, to be able to actually demonstrate that we can build them and to be able to show that they bring benefits, we have to use specific technologies. For example, these carbon nanotube transistors and the resistive RAM and the monolithic 3D. Having said that, our concepts are much more general and they extend beyond the specific technologies. For example, somebody might be interested in 2D semiconductors and our this next 3D approach is very compatible with that. Somebody might be interested in magnetic RAM or ferroelectric memories. You know, there are these 2T, 3D gain cells that everybody talks about. So that's a very important piece. So far as the architectures for nanosystems are concerned, that we are not like a pie in the sky that it works for only some specific technologies. So, so that's the second aspect. So that creates this next 3D chip. But the third aspect that we are working on is this notion of next 3D mosaic. So how do you take this multiple next 3D chips and organize a system so that you can do scale up? And when you do the scale up, you know, this concept of illusion that I talked about in my keynote is very important because I talked about this dream chip where all compute and all memory would be on a single chip, quickly accessible at a very low energy. But a dream chip is infeasible because even if you built a so-called dream chip, somebody would have an application that requires more memory and more compute. And this is where this notion of this illusion using this multiple next 3D chips and orchestrating their uh, execution in such a way so that you can achieve your energy and throughput very close to the dream chip is critical. The fourth thing that we work on in our group is you know, when we demonstrate the actual hardware prototypes, we realized very quickly that it's essential to think of co-design, which means that to be able to innovate across multiple layers of abstraction. And I gave a specific example in my keynote, which was about how we changed uh, the training algorithm for incremental training to have very few writes into the memory. And as a result, we were able to show a 300x energy delay product benefit compared to conventional stochastic gradient descent measured in hardware. Uh, there is another paper that's coming out at the date conference in April, 
where we will show another such example of co-design. So that's the fourth aspect. And the fifth aspect is, you know, what I also mentioned in my keynote, which is about the cost. And when we think about cost, it's not just about cost per transistor, but it's about system cost. And when you think of system cost, you have to think about what is the cost of designing a system, which gets into being able to do design verification, because that's the biggest cost in design. And we have kind of new drastic ways of improving design verification costs using our QED and symbolic QED techniques. I also mentioned about the importance of security. And in that context, this work on UPEC uh, to be able to find security attacks, you know, unknown unknown security attacks during design. And the third aspect of cost that I talked about was manufacturing defects and reliability, that how uh, chips are not getting tested properly. And as a result, lots of defective chips are showing up in the data center and that has disastrous consequences and how new approaches to you know, uh, you know, testing uh, in the field and uh, reliability uh, through cross-layer resilience is going to be critical. It would be stupid of me to say that people will one fine morning get rid of silicon and will do everything else, right? Nothing goes away. You know, if you think of storage, I was told, uh, I do not know for sure, but I was told that paper tapes are still around, you know, right? So nothing goes away. So I think at least in the beginning, there are truly exciting opportunities where we build on top of silicon, right? You know, you know, since I'm Indian by birth, right? So silicon is like rice. And on top of that, you put curry or, you know, since I'm in Europe, you know, you can think of silicon as the pasta. And top of that, all the sauces will come in terms of new technologies. Mm -hmm.